Welcome, my name is Jeffrey Smith and this is a blast from the past. I was going through my grandfather's papers and I found a set of papers on apartment investing dating back to 1959. The first page is his list of criteria. This is all handwritten. His criteria is he wants a four unit apartment or more depending on price, a building that was originally constructed for apartments not converted. He wants his down payment to be about four thousand dollars approximately with the price between eighteen thousand and twenty two thousand. That means he's looking for an average price of twenty thousand dollars for a fourplex with a four thousand dollar down payment that's twenty percent. And he wants space for cars or garages preferred. Location preferred downtown Wrigley or NLB that's North Long Beach or easily accessible to North Long Beach because he lives in North Long Beach Southern California. Building needs to be well constructed prefers stucco. Apartments roomy and livable. Will take something that needs paint or is dirty. This demonstrates the importance of preparing written criteria for your investment. If you don't write it down, then it's not firm, and any shiny object that comes along will distract you. Always write down your criteria in terms of what the building is, where it is located, and the pricing, and the yields that you want. Now let's go to one of his analysis sheets. This is all handwritten. Remember this is back in 1959. We didn't have spreadsheets and personal computers. We had adding machines and slide rules and printed books of amortization tables. Let's take a quick look at this. This is fairly standard he would draw out on a blank piece of paper a line across the top horizontally and then a vertical line in the middle on the left side he would put the property address and on the right side he would put the contact information for the broker or the seller then he would list out on the left side of the paper the financials of the property income down payment asking price in this situation we see that he's indicated that the loan is clear OWC owner will carry a hundred and twenty five dollars a month at six point six percent over here on this right side you can see some descriptions of the property the lot size whether it has garages how it's zoned and down here we see that He's estimating $20,280 is what the property is worth. So it's being offered at a price slightly less than what it's worth. Now remember, these dollar amounts are $1959 amounts. You probably have to multiply them by about a factor of 20 to come up to today's dollar amounts. Going further, we see that he's doing the calculations for the asking price, the down payment, first trust deed, $16,900 at $125 per month at 6.6% annual interest. He's even split it out in terms of interest and principal. Obviously, these numbers will change with each payment as principal is amortized, but this is the starting value. He shows income, he's subtracting a vacancy factor of 10%, expense factor of 15%, his gross net, he then subtracts his mortgage payment. $69 a month is the in-pocket amount, plus he's getting $32 on principal as shown over here, so his total net is $101 per month. $69 cash flow, 
$32 principal pay down. Now we can see over here he's doing long division to calculate the yield on his investment. And if you'll notice closely, he made an arithmetic mistake. He's estimating that with the $1,212 of annual return and a $3,000 down payment, he's getting 44% return on his investment. It's not 44%, it's 40.4%. If you do the math, you'll see it's 40.4. Now he's also doing the total return on the price of the property is about 6%. That's roughly equivalent to a capitalization rate. However, he's, he's not doing it the same way that a, a cap rate would be calculated, but it's close. Now here is another property on Magnolia. The contact information has been blocked out for privacy even though it's over 50 years old. This telephone number is five digits. It's prefixed with a two-letter uh, prefix because they used seven-digit phone numbers back then. This says originally house renovated. He has the income, down payment, and the asking price. In this situation, he's calculating two loans. and he describes the lot size and the zoning and the garages. There are no garages. Now in this faded print down here, we can look very closely, and the owner says can be brought up to code for about $1,500 and will result in drop in income to about $300. As you can see, the income is 348 now, but bringing the property up to code would reduce the income to $300. And so obviously he has crossed out this property, he has excluded it from further consideration. Now let's look at the property on Spalding. Describes the property address and where it's located. He has the contact information in the upper right. This is a four large one bedroom furnished he has the income, the down payment, the asking price. He's describing two loans, a $7,500 loan and a $5,200 loan at 6% annual interest, $12,700 indebtedness, leaving equity of $7,300. Three units are furnished, one unit is unfurnished. They're all at $70 a month. 4 times 70 is $280. He then goes through the income and expense calculations all by hand using a vacancy factor, a VF of 2%. You don't really need fancy spreadsheets. You don't need high-powered accountants. They did all this by hand in pencil, adding and subtracting and referring to amortization tables that were pre-printed. Obviously we can do a lot more now with technology a lot faster. And it's amazing to see these numbers from the past. If you take these dollar amounts and multiply them by about 20, then you'll see numbers that are fairly close to what we would expect to see in the current market. And now we have Stanton Place. The address and some descriptions about where to find it. He gives major cross streets. SD Freeway to the north, that's the San Diego Freeway, the 405 Freeway in Southern California. South of Pacific Coast Highway second block east of Cherry. This is how he describes where the property can be located. So he has written down the driving directions to get there. And on the right hand side he has the contact information including the five 
numerical digits of the telephone number and the two-letter prefix has been blotted out. This is a four-unit property, nice two-bedroom home. He then describes the lot, 50 by 150, and the zoning, the garages. He indicates here that the down is one-third. That means the seller wants one-third down payment. The income, the asking price, he's calculating two loans on the property. He says over here, no due, which means this is a fully amortizing loan. These are probably loans that are already on the property and that he's going to take title subject to or assume these loans when he buys the property. This was very common back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s when the down payment was to pay the seller for their equity and then the buyer would simply take over the existing debt. Nowadays we have due on sale clauses and there's not much point in asking a seller how much down payment they want unless the property is owned free and clear and they are willing to carry paper. Now here is page one of a two-page real estate purchase contract. This is where my grandfather and grandmother have decided to submit an offer on a property on Main Avenue. And you can see that they are offering $14,000 with an earnest money deposit of $300 to apply to the purchase price. and the balance of 13700 will be paid as described here. The remainder of the down payment, $2,700. A first trust deed of $8,000 and a seller carry second trust deed of $3,000. And the terms of those trust deeds. Now here is page two. You can see where they've crossed out some lines and made some editorial changes. This is all part of figuring out what the contract should really say. And it was all typed by hand. This is not a computer printout. There are also two copies of this contract that were produced through carbon copies. They put a sheet of carbon paper behind the original paper and as they typed the carbon paper would make a copy. And here's the date, November 22nd, 1959, and giving the seller 30 days to complete his obligations. This shows that purchasing income property was possible back in the Stone Age with carbon copies, typewriters, pencils, and adding machines, and amortization tables. If they could do it and make a good living with income property, so can you. Only now you have an extreme advantage with technology, computers, the internet. You can do a whole lot more, a whole lot faster, and with less effort by taking advantage of technology that we have available today. My name is Jeffrey Smith and thank you for your support.